very dispiriting news for parents in particular who are struggling with home learning. We know there is a shortage of laptops. I'm not sure why the promised 1.3 million laptops have not yet been distributed when we're almost a year into this pandemic. Can you offer parents any reassurance about when schools are going to reopen? Well, the Prime Minister has been clear he wants to get face-to-face -face learning back as soon as possible. It was when the medical officers triggered alert level five, where the NHS was at risk of being overwhelmed, that he took the decision that we had to effectively close schools to the vast majority of children. Uh, I'm conscious that remote learning is a challenge for the children, for parents, for schools, uh, um, but we need to make sure that we have the infection rates under control. And as Gavin Williamson on this programme last week was saying, you know, families and schools would be the first to know. Yeah, well, the, we'd, we'd sort of like to know as soon as possible as well. When uh, the lockdown happened, the indication was that February half term would be the point where we might be able to see some sort of phased return. We're now being told it's likely to be around Easter. What threshold do you need to meet in terms of the R rate or infection numbers or hospitalizations, or the death numbers, God forbid, before you allow children to go back into schools? Well, the government hasn't set out uh, publicly specific criteria. That's because there's continues to be going, ongoing assessment of the evidence, seeing what's happening with the infection rates around the country, seeing the impact on the NHS. And I know that parents want to make sure, of course, they would like their children to be back in school. So would I, so would the government. Uh, but I'm conscious that we need to make sure that the Vectors of transmission are limited. That's why we have the message more broadly about staying at home uh, during this uh, lockdown. I'm, I know that we can want to try and give, make sure can, can, you, reopening you suggest that infection important. numbers, infection numbers and hospitalizations or infection numbers and the infection rate are significant. But but what is that threshold? What, what, are we, what are we waiting for? Because I think parents, when they're told that it's February half term, OK, we could have hung on for that. Now they're told it's Easter, we've got to hang on for that. How much longer well, are they going to have to hang on? Well, the government hasn't uh, referred to any other dates in terms of its consideration. Uh, we've been consistent in trying to say we need to get that under control, the impact on the NHS. And that's why uh, officials are working with ministers. But I as press well you again, sorry, Ms. Coffey, but when you say so the we, impact on Susanna, the NHS, what does that mean? What is Susanna, the infection rate? What, the are the, out last week. what are the infection um, numbers and what are the hospitalisation numbers that we're trying to reach? Because otherwise, this is as long as a piece of string, isn't it? Well, as I've said, it's, uh, I can't give you specific criteria today. That's an inter, uh, an, quite an agile discussion that is happening yeah. in terms of that. I know the uncertainty is concerning for parents, children and for schools. Uh, but there's no point in me trying to give you uh, a false sense of what exactly the criteria are when that's an agile situation and we're, we will wait for the advice of our expert advisors. Uh, that that's the option. That open has, there is one option, there is one option that, that has been suggested because we obviously aren't going to get specific criteria, so parents are still in the dark. What about vaccinating the teachers? Uh, that's something that is backed even by a number of your own backbench MPs. Let's vaccinate the teachers protect them, and then we can get the children back into classrooms. Well, Susanna, the vaccination programme is understandably targeted initially at those groups of people who are unfortunately most likely to die if they contract the virus. Uh, and that's why we have this target by the middle of February to get through that uh, first uh, group of four cohorts. Now, at the same time, our medical officers are rightly saying to the public, we don't yet know uh, properly the impact of reducing uh, transmission rates once people are vaccinated. There is active work undergoing that assessment or assessing that uh, so that perhaps when the JCVI gets that evidence can make potentially some recommendations about should we change for phase two uh, the priorities for people, whether they're teachers, police officers, other people who have no choice but to interact with the public in the way that they do their jobs. Uh, but that will be, again, something to be considered appropriately based on the evidence about what impact the vaccines will have on transmission. OK, Ms Coffey, can I ask you, uh, it's been a year now since the coronavirus first came to the world's attention from Wuhan in China. Given all that's happened, particularly in the UK, where we now have currently the worst 
uh, death rate in the world over the last uh, week or so, and given where over 100,000 people have now died, at least uh, from coronavirus in this country or with coronavirus, do you think that we were well prepared as a country for this type of outbreak? Well, clearly the government had preparations for certain kinds of pandemic focused on flu. Uh, this has been a far more impactful virus uh, than uh, anybody in the world ever anticipated uh, in this regard. I think one of the things that we should reflect is also the what's happened not only with the vaccination creation, but also the programme that's underway in the UK, uh, but also the fact that our scientists through the genomics programme have been able to very quickly identify the outbreak of new variants, which have had greater uh, risks yeah, potentially. True. I mean, our scientists have done a great job. I'm really talking about the way the government has handled the pandemic, given the issues with PPE, given the failure of our testing system, given the late lockdowns, given all the issues that we faced. Would you look back now to late January and say that this country was well prepared for this type of outbreak? Or do you think, on reflection, we weren't? Well, as I say, I think we were well prepared for a certain kind of pandemic outbreak. That's the basis of what has been our history within this country, to be prepared for more traditional uh, flu. This virus, as I say, is, has had far more impact. I'm conscious of things that uh, decisions made early on, uh, which were taken with the best understanding of the virus at the time, uh, also the different resources. But I think we should look back, as I say, we have made sure that we've uh, put, invested in the appropriate uh, ways to try and make sure we can continue to learn from what's happened and be continue to be prepared. I think the vaccination the rollout is, though, has it, been a huge the, the success. The truth is... And that's we, going to be the key the truth, yeah, to look, making sure we try and get uh, sorry to interrupt, us the, back into recovery. The truth is we were not prepared. And the reason I'm asking you if you think we now we were well prepared, given we have this horrendous death record, currently the worst death rate in the world. We have horrendous economic fallout. We are nowhere near on top of this virus. If anything, we're even worse than we were to start with. I want to play you a, a clip. This is Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, in Parliament on January the 23rd, in which he's very reassuring. With permission, I'd like to inform the House about the outbreak of a new coronavirus in China and the UK's response to protect Br the British public. We've been closely monitoring the situation in Wuhan and have put in place proportionate precautionary measures. Our approach at all times has been guided by the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, Professor Chris Whitty. While there is an increased likelihood that cases may arise in this country, we are well prepared and well equipped to deal with them. And the public can be assured that the whole of the UK is always well prepared for these types of outbreaks and we'll remain vigilant and keep our response under constant review in the light of emerging scientific evidence. I mean, he couldn't have been more wrong, could he? We were completely ill-prepared for this type of outbreak, it turned out. Well, as it turns out, Matt uh, was right in saying that we acted in step, that we were guided by understanding of the virus at I mean, the time. We when we, we first repatriated I mean, he, people he from said Wuhan. That we were, he said we were prepared for this type of outbreak. It turned out we were completely ill-prepared. and that Well, I've already tried to explain, uh, uh, Piers, that mm. we were, I think we were very well prepared for the more the traditional kind of flu. This has had a wider impact than perhaps was uh, expected. Uh, but nevertheless, we have had a variety of resources uh, deployed. Uh, I'm conscious that, you know, when people first came back from Wuhan, they were put into Arrow Park. There was a way to try and contain that. We've gradually stepped up our measures as the infections went down, we were able to ease restrictions as well. So the government has continued to try and recognise the moment that is ahead of us uh, in, in trying to make sure that we're ready. We had a New Zealand. We had a, a scientist from New Zealand. We had a scientist from New Zealand on earlier, urging the government to do what they did, which is to go for zero COVID, and they are now leading very normal lives in New Zealand, albeit with a draconian border policy, where if you go in. You have to quarantine for two weeks and you have to test negative several times and then you're allowed back in, into the big bad world of, of... or big good world of New Zealand. Um, why have we never done that? Given that we're now doing all this, which is nearly a year after the virus exploded into the world, why have we decided that now it's a good idea but it wasn't a good idea when the virus first came along? 
Well, when the first virus uh, came, we actually put people into Arrow Park who were travelling back from China at that time. How many uh, people? To have that How quarantine. many people, do you know? But, but Piers, I don't know the answer to that, but Piers... It was the, a couple of hundred, wasn't it? Had, I mean, let's be honest, we've I'm only ever quarantined a, a couple of hundred people, haven't we? I would say that we've had a number of restrictions uh, that we've had on international travel. You know, certainly in the run-up to Christmas, we were saying to people, please only consider essential travel. Uh, unconscious that people have chosen to do different things during that time. Uh, but in terms of the introduction of locator forms, in terms of now we have uh, pre-testing for people who want to come into this country, in terms of uh, the 10-day isolation period has been in place for some time, as well as the test to release. Uh, and the Prime Minister is clear that we will continue to consider further measures that may be deemed necessary. As I say, we've picked up okay, but if, if, as you say, more okay. variants, all right, listen, which if, are more challenging. If, if, as you say, we've done all the right things, can you explain why we currently have the worst death rate in the world? And can you explain why we have one of the highest death tolls in the world? If we did everything right, how have we ended up here? Well, as I say, we've been learning throughout this process, working with scientific advisors on trying to take the appropriate policies. There'll be a variety of reasons why people, uh, unfortunately, have died due to this. Uh, some of that will be recognising the... Uh, age of our population, some of that will be recognising the obesity of our population. But we've been learning throughout how we can improve the different ways of trying to help people during this. You know, at the same time, I'm very conscious of the economic it's impact it's had, particularly on young people. That's why we are trying to do what we can with education. It's why we've created Kickstart. It's why we're trying to okay, make it but easy just to, to clarify, for given you now given, to get okay. involved. Listen, I, I applaud you for giving us some reasons. Because yeah, none because of that's your, the first time we've heard none a government of your, minister none of your colleagues, on a couple of explanations. But, right, none of your colleagues last week could give us any. So you've given us two now, the ageing population and, and obesity. obesity. So are you saying that the reason for us having the worst death rate in the world is because of the public? They're too old and they're too fat. Um, I think that's a very insulting thing that you've just said. Uh, you just said uh, it. Is unconscious it. that there's a variety of factors which will have led to people sadly uh, being ill during this time, sadly uh, uh, that translating into deaths. I I'm conscious that this is a very serious impact. Our own Prime Minister was in hospital in intensive care himself uh, last April. Uh, I'm conscious that we are wanting to make sure we have a wraparound support. Sorry, what did you people, find insulting? Which we have done throughout this Out of interest, what did you find insulting? You I said you to said two out, reasons for the yes, for the fact we have the worst. I also need to point out that you no, started this in too late. Unfortunately, I have to go to other broadcasters okay. uh, as okay. well, um, and I wish that we'd had more time when we were. Well, you can come back any time. We haven't but seen. I appreciate you. that. I haven't interviewed you since May, so you can come back any time. It was you that boycotted well, the program, right? So please don't play. Please I'm don't play the. We... You haven't given me enough time card because we gave you eight well, months Piers, and you didn't turn up. Thank Let me you ask very you this. Much for this. Yeah, but we just... were due to start eight fifteen. I understand it. Uh, I'm really excited about the opportunity to kickstart for young people. I understand. But I'm sorry, Piers. I'm going to have to go to another broadcast. I just wanted you just to clarify. Well. Given okay. you said, I, given you said I was insulting. Piers, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go. You're thank going to you. go. You're not going to explain okay. why you think I well, was the one insulting. We've already had twenty minutes of my time. I appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow. OK. Thank you, Miss Coffey. OK. It's interesting uh, because she... But she throws out... She gives two the, very the interesting reasons. The two reasons why reasons. we have the worst death rate in the world, apparently, are we have an ageing population, so we're too old... And we have an obesity problem. And we have an obesity crisis. problem, we're too fat. And yet when I said, so it's the public's fault, then, is it? We're too fat and nothing to do with the government. I was the one insulting. Just like to point out, after Prime Minister Boris Johnson emerged from hospital, having recovered from coronavirus, he himself had a press conference at which he said he had an underlying issue and said, literally, I was too fat. Mm. So he grasped that particular issue early on. Incredible, she thinks I'm the insulting one, but the only reasons she could give as a government minister for why we have the worst death rate in the world are the age of our population and the fact we're too fat. Dr and Hillary, apparently, is that the case, do you I'm think? the insulting one, because nothing the government's done, despite the fact Matt Hancock in that clip we played, has told us we were well prepared for any mm. kind of this kind of outbreak. And it turned out we weren't, but nothing the government has done is the problem. Nope. It's to do with our age and our weight.